A blessed morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Carmelite Monastery. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Let me read to you this circular letter, number 2023-024, from the Roman Catholic Bishop of Bacolod, Diocese of Bacolod. Greetings of Christ's Peace. As we embark on the sacred season of Advent, I enjoy and remind everyone of the following. First, on the observance of December 16 as the National Youth Day. On the first day of our Simbangabi Masses on December 16, the Philippine Church celebrates the presence and vibrant contribution of the youth. This celebration aims to strengthen their Catholic faith and affirm the rule in the Church. As a sign of our support, I request that a second collection be organized on this day in all Masses. Please forward all the collections to the Office of the Diocesan Economist within 15 days. The sharing scheme for the special collection is as follows. 35% will go to the parish or chaplaincy youth organization. 35% to the Diocesan Commission on Youth. And 30% to the Episcopal Commission on Youth. Second, on the observance of the Diocesan Discipline on the Celebration of Aguinaldo Masses. Evening Masses during the season of Advent from December 15 to December 24, are considered as Advent Masses and are not to be confused with Aguinaldo Masses. Aguinaldo Masses shall not be anticipated. Anticipated Masses are only applied to Sundays and Solemnities and not to daily Masses. In keeping with the spirit of this beautiful tradition, Please be reminded that it has been a practice in the diocese that all Aguinaldo Masses are celebrated only at the early hour of the morning at dawn during the inclusive dates of December 16 to December 24. The reason for the above observance is attributed to the sacrificial spirit of the custom. It requires the priests and faithful exert effort out of great love to rise very early at dawn for nine days to await the coming of Jesus vigilantly. As such, all evening Masses should not replace the traditional dawn Masses, but should be celebrated as Advent Mass in violet vestments and without the singing or recitation of Gloria. Third, on concurrence of Christmas Eve with the fourth Sunday of Advent. Since the fourth Sunday of Advent also falls on the 24th of December this year, please be guided of the following liturgical observance. From three o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning will be the Aguinaldo Masses. From six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening will be our Advent Masses and from 7 o'clock in the evening onwards will be the Vigil and Midnight Mass for Christmas. And fourth, on themes and homily guides. The Diocesan Commission on Bible Apostolate under Father Paolo Lanosa is preparing the themes and homily guides for our Simbangabi Masses. Let us prepare well for Christ's coming May he find us always watchful in prayer and faithful in service. With my prayers and pastoral blessing, Patricia E. Buson, SDBTD, Bishop of Bacolod, by order of His Excellency, Reverend Father Marvin Labasan, Chancellor Secretary. Dear brothers and sisters, John the Baptist appears in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
the prophet's voice should awaken us from spiritual lukewarmness. Like the people who listen to him, we should get up on our feet and go to meet the Lord. But first, we have to look deep within us and realize that we are unprepared to meet him. The mountains of our pride and our sinfulness, the valleys of our preoccupation with the things of this world, make for an uneven path. We have to make ready a straight path for the Lord by renewal and conversion. Let us now rise and welcome our Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his minister, Reverend Father Marvin Labasan. shall now light the second candle of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. From Isaiah's Book of Consolation, we hear God's words of comfort for His people exiled in Babylon. God has forgiven their sins and will bring them back to their homeland. Be called to prepare the way of the Lord in the desert is echoed in today's Gospel. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her, at her service is at hand. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the people shall see to it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of the glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ooze with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
pictures the coming of the day of the Lord and instructs us to prepare for this day by our repentance and by our holy and devout conduct. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of Saint Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, but with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay His promise, as some regard delay, but He is patient with you, not wishing with that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all rise.
Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledge their sins. John was clothed in a camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mayong aga sa inyong tanan. Today, we are on the second Sunday of Advent. If you have noticed, at the beginning of our liturgy, the second candle of Advent is now lit. Two Sundays from now, and we will celebrate Christmas. Amugani nga ang pamangkot nga maayo pamalandungan natin sa karun nga aga. Amo ang pag-usisa sa aton mga kaugalingon kung kamusta man ang aton mga preparasyon. Kamustaman ang inyo preparasyon? How are our preparations? Perhaps many, if not all, have already decorated their houses with Christmas decor and lights. Gifts were already purchased and wrapped. Christmas trees and parties were already built and set. Lanterns were hung and Christmas vacations were planned. Yet our readings for today are begging for a deeper answer to this inquiry. How are your preparations? Because John, the giant figure of Advent, is telling us that there is a much greater thing that we must prepare. He is the voice in the wilderness shouting and crying that what we need to prepare is the Lord's way. John, in a particular way, on the second Sunday of Advent, reminds us that what we need to make ready is the Lord's way. The world announces to us to prepare for holiday, but here St. John Announcing to us, prepare the Lord's way. Kung ang kalibutan, nagatudlo sa aton, ang nagabantala sa aton, nga magpreparar para sa holiday, si Juan sa Ibanghelyo karun nga aga, 
nagabantala iya sa aton to prepare the Lord's way. How? How can we prepare the Lord's way? Isaiah, in our first reading, tells us how. He said, Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made long. The rugged land shall be made plain. And the rough country a broad valley. Hawani ang dalan sa disyerto. Ang tag sa kanalupyakan, tampukan. Ang tag sa kabakulod, pagatapanon. Ang tag sa kabukid, himuapatag. Kag ang kudul-kudul, pagatapanon. What is it that Isaiah wishes to tell us? The prophet in the first reading is that simply providing us with a geographical description of the wilderness. He is not describing to us what the wilderness looked like. But contemplating about this passage, Isaiah is telling me, telling us, and describing to us our inner landscape, our interior self, and our interior life. Wala lamang siya nagasugid kung ano ang hitsura sang disyerto. Kung hindi ginasaysay man niya, kung ano ang hitsura sang ara sa sulod, sang tag sa katawo. Ginasugid man niya kung ano ang ara sa tagipusuon, kag kung ano ang ara sa kalag, Naton nga mga tao. With prophetic insight, these words describe not only the life of the people of Israel during their exile, but also speaks to us of our lives as well. The words of Isaiah and John also speak of our ups and downs, of our highs and lows. We could recount those times where we choose the crooked paths on which we got lost and the uneven ways on which we stumbled and fell. Amo ini ang ginahambal ni Isaías sa unang pagbasa. Ang mga okasyon sa aton kabuhi na kung sa diin nakabatyag kita nga ato kita sa babaw tag kung kaisa ara man ta sa dalom. Atong mga tiniyon nga kung sa diin ginpili ta ang mga dalan nga nalupyakan, kag kung sa diin na dusmo, kag nahulog kita sa sala. And with prophetic foresight, these words of Isaiah also describe the possibilities that our life and our world can be different. Nga kung sa diin ang mga nabaw mapunan. Ang mga tag-as, pagapanubuon. Ang mga tiko, pagatadlungon. Kag ang mga kudul-kudul, pagatapanon. These words of the prophet describe both what is and what might be. Kung ano kita sa subong, kag kung posible nga manguid ano kita, buwas. Kung ano ang sitwasyon ta subong, kag kung ano ang posible nga mangin sitwasyon naton, buwas. This is the message of the second Sunday of Advent. Repentance. Which is the movement from what is to what might be. Kung ano sa subong, kag kung ano ang posible nga mangin kita buwas repentance is a movement from our ruggedness and our roughness into wholeness and fullness if the lord invited us to be ready on the first sunday of advent the lord on the second sunday of advent is telling us the second R, which is 
repent. This is what St. John proclaims in the desert. A, bapt a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. You know, last December 8, I accompanied Bishop Buzon in his Masses for the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. One of the thoughts the Bishop highlighted in his homily was the necessity and importance of confession. The sacrament of confession is the sacrament the Lord established to forgive sin. While other sacraments can also forgive sin, confession is the proper sacrament. Confession is the proper sacrament where our valley of darkness shall be filled with the light of grace, where our mountains and hills of pride shall be made low by humility. However, many of us are ashamed to avail it. Many of us are ashamed to confess Pag-amugid man na ang padihot sang yawa. Kung mahimo ka sang sala, hambalon ka sang yawa, hindi mahuya. Amo na ang ihambalya sa imo. Pero kung maghinulsol ka na sa imo sala, hambalon ka man sang yawa, wala ka na huya. That is why many of us do not avail the sacrament of confession because it is the devil telling us, Mahuya ka. However, in the sacrament of confession, we are not condemned by the Lord, but rather, He is welcoming us and willing to embrace us. You know, if you really want to prepare for the coming Christmas season, the best preparation is our internal disposition and not so much about external decorations, vacations, or parties. Sometimes, what is on the outside are simply distractions that blind us to the real meaning of the season. Sometimes, the outside is the result of marketing strategy and commercialization of the season. Hindi man kita siguro pamangkuton sang Dios kung nakapamakal kag nakapanakod na kita sang aton regalo kag dekorasyon. Pero siguro gid ko nga sa iya pagbalik mamangkot gid siya kung ano ang aton disposisyon kag kung ano ang unod sang aton tagsa-tagsa ka mga tagipusuon. That is why I encourage you during this season ask a priest for confession. Kung mag-abot ko di kung aga pa kag wala pa gasugod ang misa pwede ka mo kapalapit sa akon kag magsiling Padre pwede ko ka pangumpisar kay ang pinakanami nga preparasyon para sa pag-abot sang ginuo naton amo ang matinlo nga kalag kag tagipusuon ti pamangkuton ta kamuliwat kamusta inyo preparasyon handa na bala kamo para sa pagbalik sang ginuo naton Please all rise. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is faithful and does not delay in keeping His promise of salvation. With confidence, let us pray to the Father. Father, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayer. For the Church, like John the Baptist, who pointed to Christ, may the Church proclaim renewed vigor to the men and women of today that Jesus Christ is the Redeemer of humanity and the Lord of history, we pray. Father, hear our prayer. For government and civil leaders, like John the Baptist, who professed his unworthiness to stoop and loosen the thongs of the Messiah's sandals, may they recognize their own sinfulness and unworthiness and experience God's gift of conversion. We pray. Father, hear our prayer. For consecrated men and women, like John the Baptist, may they prepare the way of the Lord through their acts of service to the list of our brothers and sisters. We pray. Father, Father hear our prayer. For those who for a long time have stayed away from the sacrament of reconciliation, May they experience the season of Advent as a time of renewing their relationship with you, Father, and continuing Christ's mission of love and service. We pray. Father, hear our prayer. May our family members, relatives, and friends who have died experience everlasting joy in the company of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray. Father, Father, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, Father hear our prayer. Father, without you, we can do nothing for our salvation. Warm our hearts and strengthen our resolve that we may live for you and for one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
is all rise. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Sebastian, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, under my roof but, only but only say the, the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please all rise. Let us pray. <clears throat> Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated for a while. <clears throat> Uh, tomorrow, Monday, December 11, up to December 13, we shall begin the Triduum of Masses in honor of our Holy Father, St. John of the Cross. And on Thursday, December 14, is the Solemnity. All our Masses will be at 6.30 in the morning. You are all lovingly invited. Please all rise. <clears throat> Let us pray the prayer of peace. Lord God of peace, hear our prayer. We have tried so many times and over so many years to resolve our conflicts by our own powers and by the force of our arms. How many moments of hostility and darkness have we experienced? How much blood has been shed? How many lives have been shattered? How many hopes have been buried? But our efforts have been in vain. Now, Lord, come to our aid. Grant us peace. Teach us peace. Guide our steps in the way of peace. Open our eyes and our hearts and give us the courage to say, never again war. With war, everything is lost. Instill in our hearts the courage to take concrete steps to achieve peace. Lord, God of Abraham, God of the prophets, God of love, you created us and you call us to live as brothers and sisters. Give us the strength daily to be instruments of peace. Enable us to see everyone who crosses our path as our brother or sister. Make us sensitive to the plea of our citizens who entreat us to turn our weapons of war into implements of peace, our trepidation into confident trust, and our quarreling into forgiveness. Keep alive within us the flame of hope, so that with patience and perseverance, we may opt for dialogue and reconciliation. In this way, May peace triumph at last, and may the words division, hatred, and war be banished from the heart of every man and woman. Lord, diffuse the violence of our tongues and our hands. Renew our hearts and minds, so that the word which always brings us together will be brother, and our way of life will always be that of shalom, peace, salam. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>